Hi, my name is Ted Wayne. I'm a senior software developer at DNEG and I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so giving an overview of XStudio. What it is, why the project began, how you can take advantage of it now and perhaps more importantly how you could get involved and contribute to what we think is a really interesting and crucial technology domain for VFX animation and post-production in general. So let's start at the top. What is XStudio? It's a playback and review application designed for visual effects animation or any other post-production sector for that matter that needs a solution for reviewing video and images in an interactive and collaborative way. Xstudio is intended to be a platform that provides all the tools and features for any individual or team to view their work, get up close and poke pixels, watch long sequence edits, share feedback, quickly compare versions and so on and so forth. Performance is a big focus. Uh, we've tried and strive to make the core playback engine efficient to get the maximum possible image res resolution, bit depth, decode and IO load that your hardware can manage. Um, we also want to be able to dynamically load really large collections of media quickly and without impacting the interactivity of the playback of the app. We need it to be really easy and enjoyable to use, which of course is the goal of most good software, but uh, with the size of DNEG's workforce and the real, really diverse levels of ex experience with review tools and workflows there, it's going to be crucial to the success at DNEG. Um, had to be accessible to anyone junior, but it also had to clearly improve the quality of life of those users who had become used to the legacy systems that we were trying to replace. We also targeted flexibility, and in that I mean that the core comp components of the player could potentially be reused and put together in different ways to build new applications and support as yet unknown needs that were lying somewhere in the future. I'll go into a bit more detail on that later on. And finally, right from the start, we plan to take the project open source and I, I probably don't need to explain the benefits of doing that to this audience, but um, it's worth mentioning here because open source aspect is, was an important factor in the architecture of XStudio and again, I'll touch on that um, shortly. You might already be aware of this, but XStudio is a sub-project of the ASWF Open, Open Review Initiative umbrella project, and as well as working on XStudio, we're working together with colleagues from various other organizations, looking at this technology domain and how we might combine the strengths of our products and expertise to create a unified solution for the community. Um, so, why XStudio? Now, DNEG is a big company these days and we've got over 8,000 crew members across the world. To cut a long story short, back in 2019 when we, we proposed a major project to improve our playback and review capability because the tools that we were using were becoming inadequate. Um, we counted that crew, the crew were using up to 13 different players. Depending on the particular workflow or preferences, there was no continuity in the user experience and artists and soups were getting increasingly frustrated with the situation. Basically, it was a big mess and a headache for us to support and maintain and improve our review capability for the whole company. At the same time, the landscape of dailies and review was shifting as DNEG was becoming truly global with VFX teams spanning multiple sites in multiple time zones. And then, of course, the COVID pandemic imposed remote working on us all. The, you know, the demands were changing even faster. Um, <clears throat> we surveyed the candidate commercial products and open source source software that's available at the time but due to a variety of reasons and some technical and some more from the sort of business perspective they we had to rule them out so then that left the obvious solution which was to develop a completely new application from bottom to top that covers all the workflows was engineered with the latest technology and is designed to be flexible and extensible um, and if, you know I should mention there was one other Motivation, developing a good review application means you get to get your teeth into UI design, color science, video codecs, graphics display, co concurrency optimization, file system IO, networking, audio processing and output, database programming, you name it. Um, in other words, it's a really great and satisfying challenge for developers like us. And, you know, we feel quite privileged to be in this position where DNEG was going to back us and, um, you know, make a big investment in this project. So let me fill you in on where we are right now with XStudio. I'm not going to go into all the features that are in there at the moment as I won't have time. This is more of a broad overview of where we are along the roadmap. The project was initiated at the start of 2020 and XStudio was deployed at DNEG in September last year. 
and is now for many years many artists their primary image review tool our stats are telling us that about 4,000 artists across the company are using xstudio on a daily basis or more frequently than that and that's out of about seven or eight thousand artists in the whole business our legacy player tools are still in use and we have a bit more work to do before their feature sets are fully covered and then they can be deprecated we've built a pipeline integration pub plugin for xstudio that connects to our production tracking servers including shotgun and executes rest queries to import playlists versions notes execute custom queries and so on in what we think is quite a nice and easy to use and fast uh, interface and this has been really popular with users as it replaces an old spreadsheet like database front end uh, that um, was pretty slow and hard to use um, we open sourced the code base on january the 19th this year and it's hosted on the aswf github site the current main branch is tagged as version 0.9 so an alpha or preview release if you like i'll go into a bit more detail about what we mean with that on the next slide but you can download it build it use it dig around in the code do a pr if you have some changes you think you should that should be in the mainstream we've included build instructions for ubuntu 22.04 centos 7.9 broccoli linux 9 on the readme page um, so far we've seen a good level of interest for what is quite a niche project um, in the four weeks since the repo has uh, went up it's been forked 60 times we've got uh, 30 watches nearly 400 people have starred the repo and 15 issues raised so far now i don't have time to go into all the features um, i should quickly outline what we've accomplished so far though um, so xstudio comprises a high performance core playback engine an open gl viewport a user-friendly qt qml front end python and c apis for plugin and scripting development uh, on-screen annotations with vector brush strokes text captions and so on openexr and ffmpeg image reader plugins are included and thanks to ffmpeg's broad coverage of image formats this means xstudio can load jpeg tiff png gif dpx sequences for example as well as the comprehensive range of containerized video formats and codecs that ffmpeg can handle uh, and then we've got accurate color management is which is provided with um, by a, a, an open color io plugin so we want to emphasize um, that we've got an ambitious roadmap for xstudio and there's a lot more work already planned uh, in some detail or if not it's in planning as i've explained we have uh, completed the core player and the ui so it's a well-featured review application that works out of the box but there are a number of major features that we're working on in the coming year again i don't have time to go into the full details of these features but the headline items are a multi-track timeline capability with editing features synchronized x studio sessions in other words remotely connected instances of the application for cross-site reviews we'll also be delivering support for one or two sdi output cards um, this robux maps currently being driven by dnx needs and immediate priorities for our growing growing our dailies and review capabilities so as we get deeper into open sourcing the roadmap might change shape with increasing community engagement um, we also want to provide some really good demonstration plugins extensions uh, as in my experience they're, they're always the place that people want to start from when they want to get into their own plugin development um, we're still improving the documentation and testing framework we're also planning a reskinning of the user interface our ui ux team at dneg have created a new design for the ui with a cleaner more consistent and attractive look so we're keen to put that uh, into into effect we're planning to um, complete work to give build compatibility for mac os and perhaps port the opengl components to apple's native graphics api metal to in ensure the best performance on the mac platform um, for windows builds we do have partners at another company who are really keen to see xstudio running on windows and all being well they'll be making progress on that front in the coming months so the main takeaway here is that the level of active development going on is really quite high we've effectively got three full-time developers going flat out at the moment working on some core cool components so this is why we tagged our main current branch in the repo as v0.9 or alpha preview because we want to make it clear that the code base it's not stable um, the components that are there you know are, are very well tested and like i say being used by thousands of artists on a daily basis but as we go forward there'll be big changes in the code as we continue on this roadmap right so if you like we see and you want to know 
how you can get involved. Well, quite simply, um, we welcome pull requests tonight, right now. However, we appreciate that it's unlikely anyone's going to want to dive in without more support and communication with the DNEG team. So we're really keen to put things in place to help anyone get involved and join the effort. Um, we can kick off regular X Studio TSC meetings uh, with, with the support of the ASWF as soon as we know there's demand from contributors for that sort of um, regular meeting. And these, you know, if they do happen, those sorts of meetings could be a great forum for feeding back to us um, about how you found X Studio, ask questions about the architecture and the specific of the code. Tell us what features you'd like to see and of course how you can get started with working on the code base. Um, we're discussing running a one-off AMA session as part of the open source kickoff, which will be organized through the ASWF. So please keep an eye on the ASWF events calendar for that one. Uh, we'll also be sending out a notification about it on our mailing list when that um, gets scheduled. Another idea that we're open to is running ad hoc code walkthroughs to answer you know, much more the nitty gritty uh, in-depth questions about the details of the code for developers that are getting stuck in. Um, and alternatively, for more general issues to do with XStudio or review technology, we are always going to be president, uh, sorry, present at the ASWF ORI community meetings. Um, you can submit an agenda item to Eric Strauss for discussion in those meetings. So for the DNA team, this is a new experience that we're keen to learn how to interact with the community in the best possible way and encourage involvement. Um, we've got an established internal project management workflow and we're still working out how we can mesh effectively with externally driven development, be that, you know, work that's being done by DNEG devs, but inspired by requests from the community or direct development involvement from um, people outside of DNEG. So in the remaining time, I'd just talk uh, quite briefly about Xstudio's architecture because I think it might be of interest to this audience. I mentioned our nebulous goal that Xstudio could, would be flexible so I can flesh out that claim a bit. So a key aspect of Xstudio's design is that we have, um, we've used the message passing design pattern called the actor model um, as you know as part of the architecture. Um, this was done using an open source project called uh, the C++ actor framework or CAF for short to build the core components. If you're interested in concurrency, asynchronous and distributed computing, I reckon recommend checking out CAF. It's a really uh, great piece of technology, a really good project. Um, in a nutshell, class interfaces are defined through message handler functions and classes interact by passing messages and receiving responses. Um, so the CAF takes care of scheduling the messages and distributing the execution of messages on a thread pool while ensuring thread safety at the actor instance level. So this means we get high concurrency when we need it, but we don't have to worry about mutex locking at all, which uh, otherwise can be a big challenge with this, this sort of complexity of a player. Um, another big advantage is that by providing serializers for your message data types, the system can be extended to work across multiple processes where the message um, it, messages are transparently passed via network sockets, which also facilitates synchronizing instances of XStudio. Uh, and you know within a site or across site and um, <clears throat> when it comes to the all-important viewport where the image is actually put on the screen we've so far we've concentrated completely on an OpenGL implementation uh, know that although XStudio's GUI was created with Qt QML the viewport remains purely OpenGL so the intention here is to make it possible to use the XStudio playback engine and viewport in some other graphical inf interface if desired, and, and you can build a demo app from the repo that dispenses with the completely dispenses with the Q, QML UI and all its dependencies entirely. Instead, it just renders the viewport into a bare bones GLX window. Um, we've also abstracted out the viewport rendering functions and isolated the OpenGL specific code into a single module. So this should help when porting the viewport to other graphic APIs like Vulkan, Metal, DirectX, and what have you. Um, we've also been careful to keep the UI and backend strongly separated again so that the dependency on Qt doesn't creep into core classes. So this means you can run XStudio in a headless mode and execute logic to build playlists, for example, or it'd be possible to implement a software viewport renderer, and this would allow off-screen rendering of timelines, which is likely to be a useful 
feature so although that, that's a fair way down the roadmap we've you know we've already put a lot of thought into solving those problems taking this approach also means that it's possible to develop a completely new user interface if you want to and just use the core back-end components the playback engine and the viewport so this could be attractive to some studios that have an established and popular review platform but they, they might need to switch out the player engine for something more modern perhaps and when it comes to the technical discussion we're thinking that the APIs would uh, be of particular interest I'm going to keep it really brief here um, Xstudio has a Python API this is also also implemented through the messaging interface which means you can use it in an interpreter running in a separate process the Xstudio session that could bring big advantage if you need it to execute slower expensive code in Python or manage different software dependency environments um, <clears throat> You can access the messaging system and interact at a low level. We've also provided higher level wrappers for the core classes like playlists, media items, media streams, the viewport and the playheads. Um, the embedded um, Python interpreter in Xstudio runs in a separate thread to the Qt event loop, which means you can't embed Py, PyQt or PySide interfaces. However, you can do it the other way around and embed Xstudio viewport or even the whole QML interface inside a PySide application window. So there's a demo of this configuration in the repo but for now we'll have to leave you on your own to wrestle with building the various dependencies you need to, to get um, PySide into your uh, development environment <clears throat> um, so when it comes to C++ we haven't got a fully developed API specifically for extending Xstudio but of course you have the whole source code at your in your hands so you can do literally anything you want but that said we have got some base classes that can be used to create plugins for specific functions uh, sorry specific purposes so for example the image readers are implemented as plugins so the ones that are included for OpenEXR and FFmpeg can be used as reference implementations to help you support your own image formats if necessary viewport overlays are also there Xstudio's on-screen on -screen sketching tool is implemented as a plugin so this provides an example of a more complex extension with mouse keyboard interactions and graphics overlay rendering into the viewport Data source plugins is how you would do a pipeline integration. So a data source is, is our concept for something that imports media, builds playlists and timelines, adds meat as metadata and so on. And then the open color, uh, sorry, the open color IO integration is also based on um, a, a color pipeline plugin base class. So if you want to implement your own color management system, you know, that is a possibility. And finally, I'll just show you the humans that are currently make up the Xstudio core team. Uh, this isn't everyone that's contributed, but these are the people on the DNX side at the moment that uh, contributors might interface with. As I mentioned, we have an ambitious roadmap and we're looking to grow the team. So do have a look at DNX website and follow the join us link to our careers page. Uh, currently, there is a position open um, in one of our Vancouver, Montreal or Toronto offices to join the Xstudio team as a developer. And that's the end of the talk. Uh, thanks very much for joining me and thanks for watching the presentation.